And now back to the MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner. On the all new Sports 920. The game. The game. The game. And welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner here on Sports 920. The game. I'm Dave Carney along with Phil Devine, Heidi Fang. And guys, we were just talking about UFC Fight Night 29 breaking down. Uh, some of the main card action, and we're going to have a whole lot more on UFC Fight Night 29 coming up a little bit later on in the show. Guys, we are lucky enough, though, to grab an interview with a gal who is going to be debuting against Sarah Kaufman at UFC 166. That is coming up October 19th. This is Jessica Evil Eye. Best nickname on the MMA planet, Jessica. How are you? I'm awesome, guys. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. Thank you. First of all, you're newly signed to the UFC uh, after things didn't really work out with Bellator and you're fighting Sarah Kaufman. Um, You know, I was just curious. I think I read that you actually got to sign your contract in the Cleveland Brown Stadium. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, absolutely accurate. I actually, um, my one sponsor, which you'll see me in my way and outfit, I'll be wearing dogs forever, forever dogs. He actually is, like, one of the head guys down there, um, as well as the, the Brown Stadium manager is actually coming to my fight. So, they, um, yeah, they invited me down, and we're like, hey, man, why don't you sign your contract here? And I was like, okay, let's do it. Wow, that is amazing. And so you actually, you're from Ohio and still train out there. Where are you exactly training? Um, I am actually over at Strong Sound Mixed Martial Arts and Fitness Center. It's actually been the the gym that I have been at, um, you know, since I started. Now, is that where uh, Stepe chain uh, trains? Yes, it is. Who who are some of the other? Been my, we we both we both literally started at the gym literally with like in a month of each other without even knowing each other either. Wow, that's pretty wild. And, and to see how far the two of you have come uh, in such a short amount of time. Um, who are who are some of the other people that uh, have been helping you out over there? Um, well, honestly, like my, I don't know if some of the names are real big too, but um, Pablo Castro, who is um, he is a Braza. He actually got his um, belt under Caprito, so um, that's my jujitsu coach, um, as well as some like other people. Um, Hazar um, actually was an Olympian um, in the Europe Olympic Games for judo, so I've got a couple other names. I'm not really sure if they're super familiar with you, but um, Brian Rogers also is at our gym. The so Predator. Yeah, the Predator. Yeah, and, and you mentioned Brasa. When you say Brasa, everyone, I mean, that's just, I remember it was a few years ago when it Drysdale, Damian, Maya uh, at the Worlds, they absolutely dominated. I think it's one of the only teams to have taken home so many gold medals in one competition. So if you're training with a guy from Brasa, it, clearly your jiu-jitsu is up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Now, one of the things is is you usually fight at flyweight, uh, and now we're, we're we're moving up now uh, to one thirty five. Um, what's the transition been like as far as uh, putting on some extra weight leading into the fight? You know what? It's actually like I'm not really changing a whole lot, other than like I changed my strength training routine. But I, I, it's almost like it's crazy because you know when I hurt my back back in April, um, I actually met this trainer and. When I met him, um, he, you know, completely spun my mind on strength training in the aspect of, like, performance and the things that you can do to make yourself stronger without, you know, changing your weight too much. So, really, I guess I, I started finally truly lifting because at 25 for all these years, I mean, I did what I had, you know, I did conditioning and stuff like that, but I never truly, like, strength trained, if that makes sense. No, it absolutely does, and, and there's a difference between lifting weights and then strength and conditioning for mixed martial arts. There's a completely different aspect to it, and the preparation going in is completely different. Um, what what was it that got you into this sport? Why mixed martial arts? You know what? I, it's crazy. Like I, I feel like mixed martial arts found me, and I didn't really find it. Like It was just so crazy how it happened. I ran into people that... You know, we're working out it down in strong style, and they were like, hey, come down and check out, you know, check out our gym. You know, you're a tough girl. Like, you like to work out. And at the time, I was in college, and I was playing a little bit of soccer, and they're like, you got to, you know, come down, check it out, check it out, check it out. And I, 
I went down, just did a couple flex band classes, and the next thing you know, I was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and then I was doing boxing, and then I entered a boxing tournament and a grappling tournament, and I was like, holy crap, and I won. I was like, wow, I, I'm pretty good at this stuff, so... Well, Jessica, let, let me ask you something real quick. This is Dave here. I've got uh, I've got a little information that you suffered a, a fairly serious injury when you were about 16 years old. You and your father, Randy, uh, were apparently walking. A drunk driver crashed into you uh, both, and you, I guess, spent about three months bedridden. Is this correct? That is. I think actually, like total was four months. Now I was bed, I was bedridden actually. Now what I'm hearing here as well, and you can tell me if this is the case, is that that experience in and of itself is kind of what fueled your determination, so to speak, to become a great athlete. Now I know you were playing some soccer, but is is that really what rounded you into the mental shape that you think you're in now to be be a professional athlete competing at the highest levels? You know, I it, yes and no. Um, I think that it taught me to believe in my abilities a lot more and to believe in myself so it did do that but I I didn't necessarily put me in martial arts but it just taught me how to be a very strong woman and strong athlete for myself because of my determination so I felt like it was always like that you know like um holding that meat in front of you know a a hungry shark like you know (laughs) you want it you want it that bad like I and I wanted to believe in myself so I always kind of I use that as like a motivation to keep myself going and to teach myself how to be strong. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it seems like one of those stories that we, you know, we oftentimes hear about and, and what we generally hear, unfortunately, is that being the end of a lot of people's life, especially when it comes to athletics and, and competing, like I said, at the highest level. So I just found that very inspirational. So thanks for sharing and, and kind of expanding on that a bit for us. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. I love to be able to use that and like to help people to understand that, like, Adversity makes you better. Adversity is what builds character. Adversity will show you what you are, what your true ingredients are. And like, my true ingredients is my confidence and my mind are are the most strongest things, and they come first. And if you if you can't beat my mind and my confidence, then you can't beat me physically. Absolutely, well said. Well, going back to August, uh, Jessica, what was the, the, your mental state like when you you get the phone call or you hear that Bellator has decided they're closing their women's division? Um, it, was it a relief that maybe with the UFC now uh, signing women that that was a possibility for you, or was it okay now back to uh, fighting places where no one's heard of? Um, yes and no. I mean, my feelings. I mean, my feelings were kind of hurt, you know, like I felt like I I did everything Bellator wanted me to do. I felt like I always showed up. I always came on time and did everything I had to do. And my feelings were kind of hurt, like, man, they were, I felt like they were giving up on me. But I had to realize it wasn't they were giving up on me, but it was just that the division, you know, was too hard for them. And that, you know, they wanted to let me go and, and live my dream and live my life. So... I knew um, deep down in my heart that if I wasn't with Bellator, I mean, UFC was going to be my next home. So I wasn't nervous. I mean, the nervous, the nervousness that I did feel was that I didn't want to go another six months without fighting at all. I mean, I don't care. I'll fight in organizations where people don't know me if I know that my end, that will help my end result to get into the UFC, and it did. And now that you are there in the UFC, I mean, you're going against a very accomplished female fighter in Sarah Kaufman. Uh, she's very well known for her striking game. And you talked a little bit about how the adversity has made you stronger. What is it like for you to take on this tough test in Sarah Kaufman? You know what? I, I don't look at individuals that way. Like, I know she's tough, but I know she's beatable just like me. You know, I'm sure she looks at me the same way, but... I feel like I've been tested against, you know, top-level females, and I have performed. And I I don't feel like – I don't feel like she's at a different level than me, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like we're both kind of even toned in that way. Like, just because she's accomplished in the sense that she fought in strike force, you know, I mean, like, what – don't I get accomplishments? I have just as many fights. I mean, I actually think I have more fights of her amateur – And, you know, like my combined record, I have over 20 plus fights, you know, so I feel like accomplishments is not necessarily about recognition and organization, but accomplishments and just in fighting in general. So I don't feel like 
I don't feel like she's got this crazy, you know, advantage of me. I feel like we're kind of even in that aspect. We're both walking into a debut in the biggest organization for women right now. So I feel like the pressure's on both of us in that sense. Well, I just want to know what your opinion is on the fact that you look at girls like a Roxanne Modafferi and a Shayna Baszler, two of the most experienced women fighters out there, and, you know, they're going in there against girls who haven't had many fights and coming out the loser. What do you think that says about the, the direction that this sport is going? I have been saying this for years, and anybody who is around me will be like, yes, Jessica has been saying this for years, is that our sport is evolving. You have to train everything. We're talking... Physically, you got to eat right. You got to live right. You got to put the energy. The, the whole entire demeanor has to be correct because these girls are starting younger. These guys are starting younger. They're they're more athletic. I mean, I think that you see these old style that were fighters. You know what I mean? That that old fight style. They're not doing as good. And that these new younger fighters. That's why you're seeing some of these young guys and girls in the sport doing better than some of these veterans is because the sport is evolving and it's becoming more competitive. So I feel like there's a whole new generation, even the generation I'm not even involved in. Like I legitimately am scared of some of the younger girls and guys that are training. I look at my brother who is 19 years old and who has dedicated his life 110% that I think about, man, he's 19 years old in another year Another year? Can you imagine the ability that he's going to have? Hey, and just uh, the ability in general. Another Killer. two years. Another two years. He's going to be able to buy us all a six pack too. Be like, <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on the show, uh, Jessica Evil Eye. Unfortunately, we've got to go. This has been a ton of fun. Of course, you're ten and one coming up fighting Sarah Kaufman, UFC one sixty six. We are really looking forward to that. Thanks for coming on the show, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. We'll Thank talk you. soon. All right. That was Jessica Evil Eye here on the MMA Fight Corner. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more UFC Fight Night 29. Don't go anywhere.